Well, good glory, dear ones. What a saga just happened over here at the gas station. I went to get some coffee at the gas station. It's early morning here. And being a person who used to raise baby pigeons as a child, I was very interested to see up in the sky, there was this big, great big rogue raven chasing around a young pigeon, what you call a squab, that had just learned to fly in a circle over the gas station. And the, I could see that the baby pigeon had some tail feathers missing and was not strong enough, you know. And so the raven was hot in pursuit. And the baby pigeon landed just inside of uh, where people fill up the gas, right by the gas station in the shade. And the the raven was circling around outside. And then I saw the mother pigeon with the beautiful slender neck that the, that the women have, the women pigeons have, and the slender body. She was sitting on top of the gas station trying to figure out what to do, as was I. <laughs> because there was the young squab, he was like dazed and sort of wobbling and sitting under, under the shade of the gas station canopy. And uh, so I waited just a minute and I stepped back and the mother pigeon came swooping down and the baby pigeon went off to this to this house over here um, towards the roof of that house and from afar the the rogue raven was sitting on a rooftop across the street with an with its mouth open panting for panting for violence right <laughs> it was totally scary <laughs> and it it had its eye on the situation, and the minute that the squab flew up, it came swooping down from top of on top of the, the gas station, and caught the baby pigeon in mid-flight, right over the about mm, two feet above the the top of the house that it was heading for, and so. So I went down to see what had happened, although I could tell when the mother pigeon veered off that it was not going to be good news. And so I went down and there was the rogue raven, the mean raven on top of the roof with the uh, slender body of the little baby pigeon underneath of it. And I could see that it was lifeless and so I started to walk away, right? So then a man walked by, a young man walked by and men are very good at noticing their surroundings i've noticed they catch things that the women sometimes just don't catch in this they they have great peripheral vision and they like scope the scene and they they're just really good at that he caught immediately i wasn't even looking up that way he caught what had happened and he understood so and and under his breath he went oh no like that so i went to like comfort the man right i couldn't do a thing for the pigeon so so I said, geez, I, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about what happens. You know, happened just then. I hope you're all right. And he said, oh, yeah, he was okay. It was all all right. So then I went up to, to retrieve my car and to head off to Bible study, right? And so from the parking lot of the, of the gas station, I started down. And here was a young, a young lady uh, in her teens. And she was standing looking up at the roof of, of the house on the wrong side to see the pigeon, right? So she looked distressed too. So that was three of us, three distressed people, one rogue raven, right? And one baby pigeon and a mom pigeon that wasn't very happy at the time. So so I, I opened my window and I said to her, are you looking for the pigeon? She said, yeah, she was really wanting to find out where the baby pigeon was. So I parked and we went up and we looked and there was the body, oh, terrible story the body of the baby pigeon on the doorstep of the house with no head. So this, this raven only just wanted to like conquer and kill this baby pigeon that was weaker and couldn't fly as stronger. It didn't really want anything. It just, it just was in some kind of rage, you know. So I spent some time we checked the baby pigeon. She explained how it was all beat up and um, she could see blood everywhere and she was so upset and so forth. And I tried to explain how every spring the ravens come and eat lots of little baby birds and stuff and how this one must have just, just gone over the edge and just gone crazy about that kind of stuff. And so, 
and I found out that she's an animal lover and rescuer and that she's she was and so we comforted each other she and I we couldn't do anything for the baby pigeon <laughs> so I have a little aside that I couldn't tell her about that I will I will explain to you as well as I can here in the city nature is out of balance and the animals they pick up the vibes of the thought forms of the people here in the country, things are more in balance. You've heard me talk before about the singing of the crystal sands in the desert, the, the, the feeling of new creation and new earth in the, in, the, in the mountains, right? There in the mountains, the, the, higher, the higher life forms in the astral realm they transform all the thoughts and purify the thoughts of, of humans as well when there are enough of them to do that. Here in the cities, they are outnumbered. There are not enough places for nature spirits to be. And so the people, their thoughts it are, are not, in a, they're not in an environment where they can be purified as much as is done in the country. Not right now, okay? The, and in addition, the animals in the cities have a tendency to this kind of berserker behavior. The wild animals and the, and the house pets too. They, they, the house pets tend to get neurological conditions, um, uh, nervous conditions. I, I know you've, he you've heard of that in both um, cats and dogs, right? So, so the thing we have to do as people we have, to, we have to find a way to make the cities such that the nature spirits wish to return. So that's what I'm asking of each of you, is, is that you recreate that, that in your mind, that, that, that beautiful vision of, of a place where you live and where all is in harmony, all nature is in harmony, and where ravens, poor things, don't pick up those horrible, you know, Hollywood movie notions about massacre and killing for no reason and all this, where, where ravens only kill because they are hungry or because they're, they need to feel they're young. And where, and so, we, we humans will be uplifted by this balance in the natural world as well, for sure. A terrible story, but a, a good lesson, I feel. Wishing you all a blessed day, a day of harmony with all other people and all other creatures of Earth and with Earth herself.